Hi, welcome to Words of Life. I'm Cheryl Gillum. Bernie Dake's not with us today, but joining me in the studio is Stephen Nolan, who is the digital media developer for Soundcast. Welcome, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you for having yeah, me. We are so glad you're with us for these episodes. We hope you were encouraged and inspired by the three testimonies we shared during our last series. This week, we are launching a new series on leadership with Major John Murphy. And actually, this was uh, a concept uh, that was birthed from you, Stephen, right? Yeah. So we were thinking about new series. And one of the things that uh, came to mind and came to heart was, you know, there's a lot of leadership books and video series that are kind of targeted for a corporate uh, business um, audience, mm-hmm. but not so much an audience for everyday leadership. What does that look like for a dad, a stay-at-home mom, someone who is not a boss, a supervisor, someone who's not uh, a business owner? What does that look like to have leadership in mm-hmm. your life? So we discussed that with Major John Murphy on what does it look to be an everyday leader? Uh, Major Murphy even states that there are a lot of resources, but not many through a biblical lens. Well, joining John Murphy is a voice that you may know from a previous series, Bethany Farrell. She and John start off our series by asking an important question. When it comes to leadership, why are you doing this? Hey, Major Murphy, how are you today? I'm doing well, Bethany. Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm really excited about this opportunity to sit with you. Um, we go to the same church. We do. And so I have the opportunity to see you with your wife and your beautiful son mm-hmm. uh, in all the different ways that you interact at the church. You're a leader in the youth programs. You're you're there all the time. But I've never really gotten a chance to sit with you one-on-one and get to know you. So I'm excited to be a part of this process. This should be a lot of fun. It's a great topic. And Everyday leadership. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of information out there about leadership, a lot mm-hmm. of good books, podcasts, folks talking about it all over the place. Yeah. I think that uh, what we can add here is that concept of everyday leadership, kind of at the end of each session, drawing down, what what can I do? Regardless of where I am or who I am, mm-hmm. what God has given me, the position or the place that he has put me, um, what can I do to kind of better influence the environment around me? And that's really where we're going to start. I think, I think what we can offer here, what we have to offer in our discussion is really centering leadership, I think, where God wants it to be, really laying a strong foundation early on um, and then moving from there. And it's exciting. We'll see where we where we end up. Yeah. Well, let's jump in. Uh, you said, Bethany, that, that uh, you know me a bit. And yeah, we've seen each other around. So you know our son, Michael. Michael. Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't know what if you do know or not, but well before Michael, we felt the call to adopt before. Went through the process of selecting adoption agency. Mm. And the interesting thing, what drew us to this adoption agency, Christina first, was that it was it was very open. Um, we produced a portfolio of our family mm-hmm. with stories and pictures and history, right? Yep. And then that was given to the mothers that were interested in, uh, in the adoption process. And then through interviews and phone calls. Long, long processes. Yes, yep. the, the mothers chose who they wanted to raise their child on their behalf. It was an incredible process. Um, and we were selected at one point by this wonderful mother. And as you can imagine, since you have children, we started the process of preparing ourselves. Nesting. Lots of classes, believe it or not. Yeah. And uh, we were so very excited. Christina actually was in the room when the little boy was born. Aww. She got to be a part of that. That's great. Yes, one of the first ones to hold the baby, this healthy little baby boy. But events didn't go as we had envisioned them. Mm-hmm. Um, we did receive the call, which we thought was going to be, okay, now you can come home, come to the hospital and take your, your child home. But the call was, um, we're sorry, can we meet? We mm. need to have a discussion. And you can imagine probably what happened. Yeah. Um, the mother decided that uh, she wanted to raise the child, which I fully understand, yes. right? But yeah. it was heartbreaking. I would say that's probably one of the more difficult things that we have gone through together, yeah. Christina and I. And it was processing that loss through 
asking the questions, um, why something we, you know, what, what really happened here, that God really spoke clearly to me. But what he spoke loudest to me was a question. And the question was, um, why are you doing this? Hmm. What was your purpose to begin with? Was it for your benefit, your family's benefit, or you really, or were you really seeking the benefit of that child and that mother? That question really shaped who we became and really took the emphasis off of what, what needs are we trying to meet in ourself, um, in the actions that we take, yeah. and how are we trying to align with what God desires mm -hmm. for His creation, not just not us, just you, right. but everybody around us. And I think that's a great place for us to start this first session, that question. Who are you doing this for? So I think our discussion on leadership needs to begin not with what we must do or what we must believe, but what God has done, what God is doing, what are his purposes? Mm. Because that's the foundation. That's the centering point of our leadership as believers. You're establishing from the very beginning that God is the ultimate leader. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I don't know if you've read it. There's a great book by Arthur Glasser. It's called Announcing the Kingdom. Mm -hmm. um, and he states that there are six major axioms in the Old Testament that are essential to our understanding God and his mission and ultimately our participation in that. So let's run through those if we can. Yeah. Just three of them. Okay. So first, God is absolute in his kingship. Uh, do you remember that doctrine? You probably remembered it, or you probably memorized it. I know the first two kid. words. We, we believe. believe. <laughs> How about that God is a creator, preserver, preserver and, and governor, governor of, of all, all things. things. Right. Mm -hmm. And in addition, his rule over individuals and nations is always just, right? right. Always just, always righteous, because whatever he does reflects his character, yep. which is righteous and just. And God's power, his goodness, his holiness, his justice, patience, and mercy are always prompted by a loving concern for us, his creation. Isn't that amazing? It is. It's just this humbling thought that the ruler, the creator of not just the world, but the heavens, the earth, like everything that there is, that he cares so deeply for us, these little peons, what are we? Exactly. He cares for us and he yeah. works for us and for our benefit. Uh, Bethany, the second axiom is this, God's rule demands personal commitment. Ooh. That wouldn't be unfamiliar to mm -hmm. believers, certainly not us, right, in, in the Salvation Army. Those of us who acknowledge God to be our God must personally commit themselves mm -hmm. to Him and His righteousness. In fact, if you read through Scripture and also the Christian tradition, right, yeah. the teachings of the church, there is no acceptable alternative to that. Right, um, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Yes. Yep. And love your neighbor as yourself. Right? Yes. Uh, the, that commitment is just that. Those that bear His image are those people. Right. Right. And the last one we're going to talk about is um, those of us who commit ourselves to God, His subjects. Together, we must constitute a servant community. We are called to serve. That's who we are. Because God is not concerned solely with us as individuals, but with us as families, as people groups, as entire nations. And in that, because of his justice and his holiness and his righteousness, he reveals himself as opposed to racism and nationalism, sexism, enforced yeah. poverty, and the abuse of power. That's who he is and who he calls us to be as well. So that service aspect of who we are individually and in community is to be one of the distinguishing marks that we bear as we live out our understanding of faith in God. Earlier, we talked about how God is the ultimate leader, right? Mm -hmm. That as leaders, that's the first thing we recognize, that he's the leader and we follow his example. And everything that you've just talked about is so beautifully demonstrated in the New Testament when we see Jesus mm -hmm. moving on earth, right? He was a servant leader more than anything. And he always uh, spoke to the Father before he made a, made a, made a move. Um, and it was just such a beautiful representation of servant leadership. And I think, I think where we get lost as believers is we recognize the example of Jesus in that. 
Um, but we don't necessarily see our role, mm. right? We don't necessarily see that as a foundation for our leadership, especially when we're given a task, whether it be related to my occupation. Here, go finish this mm -hmm. or go start this. Or maybe it's related to my family. I have to care for my son who's 10 years old. I have to take him to baseball this evening and I have to talk to the coach and I have to do those things. For some reason, we can segment those two things. And while we are influencing and we're leading, we're not keeping in the back of our mind, is this for God's purposes or not? Yeah. It kind of goes back to my original story, right? I, I can, I can, not speaking for everybody, I can go through life and unconsciously segment uh, I know that this is advancing God's kingdom. I know what his purposes are. And I know he's for the redemption of the world. But when I'm doing this, that, that doesn't necessarily connect to that. And I, and I think that's a disservice. It's doing a disservice to us, right? Yeah. As kingdom agents, if we want to put it that way. But it is, it is not honoring God in being his creation and understanding why he is giving me the opportunity to raise a 10-year-old boy right? Given me the opportunity to perform this task, given me the opportunity to speak to my son's coach. All of those in his mind relate to the redemption of the world. And I need to consistently remember that in my own life. Man, Major, I love that because it's just unique from all those other leadership resources and books and things that you can get where um, the goals are just so different. But when it's, when it's the view of Christian leadership, it's very clear. Are we advancing the kingdom? There is a definite, there is a foundation and there is a definite direction and everything revolves around that. I truly believe that. And it applies to every person. It doesn't matter if I'm a boss of anybody or not, or if I just sit in a cubicle and go home at the end of the day, mm -hmm. everybody's got a part in this leadership. Right. Which is and beautiful. We'll, we'll definitely hit that a little later. I'm looking forward to that. So what can we go home with from this? How about this? Um, choose one right? Okay. Just one. One task, one obligation, one responsibility. And a lot of those. Right? One conversation, yeah. one relationship, just one. One okay. of those things that you have presented to you, we could say one of those things that's on your table, right? Okay. Just choose one of those and ask yourself sincerely, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Am I working to advance the kingdom? How am I serving God's purposes in this specific instance? And you'd be surprised. You really would be surprised. I look forward to trying that. All right. Thank you, Major. I appreciate your time today. Thank you, Bethany. <laughs>